All right, everybody, let's welcome in our special guest to today's episode. So I have with me Jesslyn. Jesslyn Rollins is the Chief Executive Officer of the family-owned beverage brand BioLite. Jesslyn's anesthesiologist father wanted to create a product that would, quote, bring the IV bag home to people when and where they needed it. From selling the IV in a bottle out of the back of her Toyota to guiding the expansion of the company into its new Marietta production facility, Jesslyn has guided BioLite from startup to disruptor in the beverage industry. Very good morning and a welcome to you, Jocelyn. Thanks for joining the podcast today. Absolutely. I am so excited to be with you, Philip. No, that's awesome. Uh, the, the pleasure is all mine. I, I hunted you down through LinkedIn. I was like, this is a really cool story. This is a successful business. This is so relatable. And uh, we were able to get it booked uh, in the midst of your busy transition into your new facility. So I'm excited to talk about uh, all kinds of cool stuff. We want to suck the knowledge out of you. Woohoo! Let's do it. <laughs> so I let's start off with like the just the overview. So I want to talk a little bit of getting your CEO opinions about the general economy, uh, kind of retracing your journey. But we first need to know what this thing right here is. There's there's this company that makes this thing that I found in the convenience store the other day, and uh, maybe you could just start us off with what is the origin story of this company that makes a quote unquote ivy in a bottle biolite? Yeah, I would be honored to. So. As you mentioned, BioLite is my family's company. So a few years ago, my mom had breast cancer. And when she was going through her chemo treatments, she was very sick and very dehydrated to the point where she could not keep up with her chemo treatments without getting IV bags beforehand. Okay. Now, my family was trying everything, sports drinks, children's rehydration products, electrolyte powders, and nothing was working. Hmm. So my dad happens to be an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. He has years of experience tailoring his patient's IV bags with nutritional supplementation to help them feel better. Mm -hmm. So when nothing was working, sports drinks, children's rehydration products, you name it, my dad and my oldest sister, Sarah, set out on this journey to create a product that would be like bringing the IV bag home to people when and where they needed it. Mm -hmm. So today, BioLite is the first recovery drink with as many electrolytes as an IV bag. In comparison wow. to sports drinks, you would have to drink close to seven sports drinks to equal the amount of electrolytes in BioLite, or you would have to um, ingest two of those electrolyte powders. Okay to equal one bottle of BioLite. There right, and this is a 16 fluid ounces. It's not a. It's not like you have to drink a daggum gallon of it, right? No, 100%. Right. It is highly concentrated with electrolytes and ingredients that help with nausea, help with fatigue, okay. and help with low energy. So that so that's really what it does. We are here to help relieve headache, fatigue, and nausea mm -hmm. due to severe dehydration. And that's what we're doing. So you mentioned one thing in there that I, I part of the reason I wanted to approach y'all for the interview is a very interesting, interesting story that your dad being an anesthesiologist, the whole cancer tie in. So some people may not even know what an anesthesiologist is. I, it happened to catch my attention because my wife is a CAA, a anesthesiologist assistant. She actually is heavily involved in the industry and the profession. So you and I both know, but uh, what's a, it's interesting the whole time for him being able to create that solution that now you market to the general public. Mm -hmm. But what is a fun fact about anesthesiologists that most folks may not know? So I had... So I talked to my dad about this question because, I mean, um, he is in that world. Mm -hmm. What, Dad, what's the fun fact here? Yeah. And dad, um, dad was hilarious about this. He was like, if you are the type of personality that doesn't like a lot of recognition, likes to stay behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and you are medically minded, anesthesiology is the way to go because yeah. <laughs> you because it's not like people remember Mm -hmm. the person that put them to sleep. So when you're right. in the grocery store, you're not going to be like, oh my God, my anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. right. You can fly under the radar and yep. that's just the way that dad likes it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so interesting. It's like you said, as um, 
the anesthesiologist or the and the anesthesia team, like a lot of times my wife says that the, the entire surgical team refers to her as anesthesia. They don't even call her by her name. Yep. She literally sits behind a curtain while the surgeon's on the other side of the patient doing his or her thing. And so, yeah, it provides that anonymity. If you don't need the spotlight, um, anesthesia would be a cool path for you. And I know this is not, a, but hey, you know, maybe some of y'all listening, some of your kids or, or friends or family are looking to go into the medical profession. But that said, uh, mm -hmm. anesthesia is one of the top five, I believe, most desired residencies uh, out of any MD path. So, I mean, anesthesia, extremely prestigious, extremely valued. I, I don't think anybody's going to want to have their surgeries awake and with no pain meds anytime soon. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that job security wise, it's probably a, a safe bet. But the other part of it was he founded the company. He created this product, yeah. you know, many years ago. The company was founded in 2017, and you decided to step into the family business from the get go. How did you get involved initially? Don't want to take that for granted. And then how did you go through the journey to becoming the chief executive? Those are both great questions. So at the time when dad approached me about BioLite, BioLite was a secret in our family. Okay. I had no idea that it was going on. My middle sister, Madeline, had no idea that it was going on. Sarah and my dad had worked on BioLite and getting it, you know, to life over the course of four years and didn't let anybody know. It wasn't until four pallets were on their way to my family's home in Atlanta that my dad decided it was a good time to sit me down and tell me about this drink that they had created. And so here's the deal. Here's what my life looked like right then. So I was actually working at the Laughing Skull Comedy Lounge. I have a theater background. I love stand-up comedy and I thought I'd try my hand at it. Okay. I was absolutely terrible. <laughs> but what I was good at was being very sweet. So they were like, listen, mm -hmm. stand up's not your thing. Why don't you go check people in and um, check in their tickets? And I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? That sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was really no career path there. My dad was like, hey, listen, you're good at talking to people. Um, mm -hmm. You've got this theater background. I think you would be really good at selling this drink that we have created. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, was that that was so like looking back at that situation, it is so wild that dad was just like, hey, heads up, want you to, you know, we've got this drink coming and would love for you to head up sales. Yeah. Just, I mean, dad, what are you doing? So, so anyway, I was like, dad, listen, got to try the product, want mm -hmm. to test this thing out, mm -hmm. want to see how it relates, um, you know, with other products that I've tried. And it worked for me. It So what happened was, I mean, you're talking about a 25-year-old. So what I did was that I went out and I drank one too many alcoholic beverages in the morning. I was like, dehydration helps with nausea, helps with fatigue. I know how to put that to use. So, so what I did- you, you made yourself your own lab rat? I love this. <laughs> I did make myself my own lab rat in a very 25-year-old way. All and right. we, so so what I did was, I drank one too many the night before, woke up the next morning, nauseous, headache, poured BioLite over ice, drank the whole thing. And dad said that the only difference between us and an IV bag is there's mm -hmm. a 30-minute delay. So I put mm -hmm. a timer on my phone. And in about 18 minutes, I started to hyperventilate because I didn't feel any different. And I thought mm -hmm. my dad had created a dud. <laughs> and then down to the wire, when we got to like, when I got to like 28 minutes was when my mm -hmm. body started to normalize and my headache started to go down and nausea started to subside. And I was like, holy Toledo, I think we might have something here. Mm -hmm. But Philip, as you can imagine, I was thinking, I was like, of course, you know, there's got to be some internal bias here. Of course, I wanted yeah. my dad's drink to work. So right. that's when I you started. You were drinking the Kool-Aid or the BioLite. I were. was. I wanted it to work so bad. <laughs> right. So I went to my high school, the Lovett School in Atlanta, and mm -hmm. I dropped off samples for their football team to try and mm -hmm. talked to the athletic trainer. He had no idea who I was because, like I said, I was in theater. And he was like, mm -hmm. thanks, weirdo. Like, get out of here. So, but the thing was, was that he called me that so gave him the drinks on Thursday. He called me that Saturday morning and told me that he gave his 10 players on the football team that habitually cramp 
one bottle before the game and one at halftime, and nine of them did not cramp at all. Wow. So did when I heard sample? that, how that's did you what, negotiate that? Was it was did you give them samples and say, hey, just try it, or did you negotiate like a small batch deal? Oh no, no, no. That was one hundred percent free. Okay. Please okay. try it. That's okay. how we got started. Was um so once I heard that, I went to Buford, North Gwinnett, I mean, a mm -hmm. ton of different places and just would drop off samples. And I mm -hmm. had like a 90% close rate. Whoa. Okay. Because you could I just mean, tell the story, the testimony, like, hey, here's the sauce, you know? Yes. Try it. And if mm -hmm. it doesn't work, then don't call me. But if it does, I've got four pallets in my garage. Smart. Yeah. And that's out of that Toyota Highlander as your LinkedIn profile reference. So you were heading up sales. You right. would basically go into these schools, go into these connections. You're already that kind of um, easy with people, you know, know how to work that with your personality. And y'all are starting to make some inroads with this, yes. what used to be not too long ago, a top secret of your dad. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah, my whole my whole like my whole plan back in the day, because this was way before COVID and mm -hmm. all that. I mean, mm -hmm. I would just walk into the school and try to look like a student or a mom with my little rolling cooler and be like, hi, where's the athletic trainer? And they would point me down the road and I would go talk to them. That was that was the whole name of the game. But you know, that's actually smart, by the way. I've I, The whole doe in the woods routine, if you actually just kind of like, oh, oh, you know, I just wandered into it. And then like you ask people for help. It's much better uh, in a lot of instances than you being like the super assertive power. I know everything. You need to talk to me. And so that's that's actually quite brilliant. So you transition from that. At some point in time, COVID mm -hmm. drops. And then you, at some point in time, decide to take on the reins of the whole thing. Tell me about that next step. So there's a, so we got started in 2017. So there was a mm -hmm. gap in between us getting off the ground and then mm -hmm. COVID. So yeah. just real quick, kind of the the middle part of the story is my brother-in-law, Adam Zabo, who's in wine sales. We were at a family, um, we were at a family reunion and Adam was like, Jesslyn, really appreciate your hustle to all these high schools, but this is not how beverage sales works. Like you need a distributor. So mm -hmm. He connected me with Savannah Distributing here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I figured out that the CEO of Savannah Distributing was a UGA graduate and mm -hmm. happened to be a part of the fraternity SAE. Mm -hmm. My dad was a UGA SAE. So I went, before I had the meeting with Savannah, I sold 900 bottles. It's actually sold, like money mm -hmm. in my hand. Mm -hmm. 900 bottles of BioLite to... SAE and I opened up like 25 accounts all around Athens because at that point we hadn't had any retailers so yeah. had to get those retailers to kind of yeah. show the proof of mm -hmm. the product and then they Savannah distributing was the one who connected me to Kroger and yeah. that Kroger we launched Kroger in March of 2017 mm -hmm. in coolers and mm -hmm. that was BioLite's big break that was the reason yeah. why we started to climb the ladder early okay. on. And yeah. then you've got COVID, which is around, you know, 2019. That was when we were launching our first, um, or excuse me, our second flavor. Mm -hmm. So the first few years, we only had one flavor. What was the question? I wanted to like- No, no, no that was, that was that was part of it. So then how did you end up taking the reins of the chief, uh, chief executive down that road? So uh, here's the thing. I wish that- because everybody, everybody asks me that. Mm -hmm. But the thing that people don't understand about a growing family business that mm -hmm. in an industry that you have no idea what you're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. mom is a homemaker. Dad is an anesthesiologist. <laughs> um, our roles in the beginning were very gray. So mm -hmm. yeah. while my dad was in the beginning, the held the title of CEO. Mm -hmm. He was a nine to five physician. Right. So he had no, like, he had no time to run and operate BioLite. In the yeah. early days, it was just me and my sister, Sarah, and we mm -hmm. were doing everything. And when I mean mm -hmm. everything, I'm talking, you know, delivering the product, invoicing the product, selling the product. But Sarah went more into operations and I went more into sales mm -hmm. because of what we were 
either good at or where the company needed the most, um, the most of right. our focus. Right. So, uh, yes, technically, <laughs> Jesslyn was the director of sales and marketing in the early days. Yeah. But as I mentioned, it was it was very convoluted. It was very gray, and there was an element of plucking those titles out of the sky. Right. It was when we started to hire people. Right. It was when we started to actually get Kroger off the ground and people mm -hmm. would be like, I need to talk to the CEO mm -hmm. or I need to talk to this person to deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. I recognized that we needed clarity, not only for our internal purposes mm -hmm. of who to go to for what responsibility, but also for the outside looking in for the customers and retailers and so on and so on. So mm -hmm. there was a time, so I got started in sales and marketing and I saw that happening right around, right around the early 20, like mid 2019, early 2020. And that's when I started campaigning to my parents that I, that I wanted to be CEO. Okay. I wanted to be CEO. I wanted to lead the company into the future. I wanted to hold all of the responsibility and mm -hmm. all the good and bad that comes with that. And I mm -hmm. put together multiple presentations about how I would lead the company and they turned me down. Okay. And then I went back to them again with another presentation mm -hmm. and they turned me down. And right. it wasn't it wasn't until later on um, as of recent, because I think I've, I've only been CEO for the past two years mm -hmm. that they finally were like, God, she's persistent. Yeah. <laughs> persistence so wins. How, that's how I came into the role and uh, could not be more proud to to be able to lead everybody and have everybody's faith that I am the woman for the job. Absolutely. So there's, you know, that's a period of uh, many years we're looking at back now. That's, you know, at least five years. What were just maybe like the top uh, one uh, on the good and then the bad, the top a high and low as your team went from, it's just a family business. We're wearing all the hats. There's not really any structure to you mm. get the Kroger deal to now you're a growing sustainable operation. What was like a one high and one low that you reflect on? Gosh. So First answer to that is that it would be completely different dependent upon the year. Like in the right. in the first year, it was like, how in the world am I just myself going to get out 100 orders mm -hmm. and invoice like that? Mm -hmm. And then I mean, we're talking crying on pallets, like mm -hmm. it's a whole mm -hmm. situation. Yep. Um, but I would have to say, probably the biggest, the biggest challenge that. I would say right now is learning. So I am I am not one of those people that is a micromanager. Mm -hmm. I truly trust that I've hired the right person and mm -hmm. they are going to get the job done and all the things. I don't mm -hmm. need to hold their hand. I just give them the goalpost and they figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. And that has gotten that has gotten me into trouble because what happens as your company is growing and scaling as fast as ours is, because yeah. BioLite since the beginning has either doubled in revenue or more than doubled in revenue every single year. Oh. So the person that you put into a position, it like when that position um, is available, potentially mm -hmm. doesn't isn't able to grow with that position moving mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. and uh, that that is very very challenging to to grasp and that is very challenging for that for that for both me and that person to to realize like i had no idea that that was a thing and that goes for my position ceo mm -hmm. back in 2020 was a very different hat than what I'm having to wear now. And well, if, undoubtedly, yeah. And, I would, if, uh, yeah. and if you, if I did not want to better myself, seek out experts to help me grow in this role, I would not be the best person. And that's mm -hmm. that key 
of finding that person that that enjoys that change and change and wants to better themselves. Yeah, that's the type of person that I'm looking for. Not exactly. Okay, do they have the experience today? Yeah. No, and here's the thing: is I think part of it's because just the nature of the very industry y'all decided to enter. You decided to enter during a very interesting time in terms of macroeconomics, because obviously the past two years have been crazy for everybody, but also food and beverage itself, right? I mean, it's a saturated competitive uh, market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as y'all were growing and you constantly had to be learning and, and being a CEO in 2019, not the same as even 2020, you know, each of the years doubling in size, what was one strategy that y'all needed to implement? And you may have had to, you know, tear that up and throw it away the next couple of years, but what is one strategy that y'all took that helped you establish your brand and position in a super tough market called, you know, food and beverage. So one of the major things that we did was in the early days, I did close to 200 samplings and mm. I got face to face interaction with customers, mm -hmm. what they liked about the product, what they didn't like about the product. Um, the, the major selling points that got somebody to want to try BioLite. And we used that feedback from those customers to completely revamp the BioLite label. Mm -hmm. Because Smart. when you're in a grocery store and you've got a billion products to choose from, you mm -hmm. have to be competitive. It is mm -hmm. very much like dating. When you, you've got to like what, like how the person looks and like their mm -hmm. vibe to want mm -hmm. to take them out on a date. And yep. so getting that packaging just yes. right using customer feedback was very, very helpful for us. So important. Like if you can't catch someone's eye on the shelf, yes. done, done. Mm -hmm. You got to, and that goes into getting on the shelf. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, we're now we're getting to the marketing mix here, but yeah, y'all, y'all, that, that, that's very smart. Cause that's what I talk about a lot with my audience and then my, also my clients is putting that customer voice at the center. So like you said, one strategy that worked for y'all early on is that early sampling and being right there face to face with your customers, getting their feedback on something like packaging helps set you up for when you get a Kroger deal to not have it just blow up in flames because you had already refined all these things about the product through essentially testing and yeah. samples to where you were built more to succeed from that feedback. 100%. Awesome. Very, very awesome. So um, as you've grown, you've gotten the Kroger deal, you've got more organizational structure, mm -hmm. you've been growing, you've been doubling in size every single year. I did see the news release when I first started to do some intel on y'all that y'all are moving to this new Marietta warehouse. I saw the press releases in the news and y'all not, it wasn't just a bigger building. It's also a, a enhanced company size. You had a double digit increase in staffing to, you know, build out that next uh, level of scale. So Maybe you can kind of highlight that a little bit, what what those news pieces reflect is going on in the company. And then what's the next thing y'all are going to look to tackle as you're looking to hit that next level of scale? Yeah. Okay. So first question being warehouse in Marietta. And mm -hmm. excuse me, not just warehouse, headquarters. That's um, true. Yeah. So BioLite was split into prior to the headquarters in Marietta. We had 10,000 square foot square feet of warehouse space up in Canton, Georgia. And then we had a co-working space um, here in Atlanta. And Marietta, I mean, who the heck knew that Marietta had warehouse space? I didn't. But Marietta allowed our team to all be under one roof. So today, and it just happened that the building was white and blue on the outside. Oh. <laughs> and I am insanely OCD. So I was like, yeah. if we don't get that building, I'm gonna lose it. Yeah. Um, so I'm very, very proud of our of our new building. But okay, so we've moved into this 50,000 square foot warehouse, 10,000 square feet is office, 40,000 is um warehouse, and everybody's really enjoying it. Um we are I'm huge into culture, huge into our our people. I want there to be a good vibe when you walk in here. And so we're, yes. we're tweaking some, yes. some things around the office that I'm very proud of and adding some color um, yes. to a very gray building on the mm -hmm. inside. So that'll be good. Um, as in people, God bless my favorite thing about BioLite. So we have, so in the early days, we would wait, Philip, until it was absolutely effing necessary to hire someone. Yeah. 
Right. And I mean, I'm talking, like I mentioned, crying on pallets. Right. Before humans are expensive. <laughs> humans, humans are expensive and the right humans are very expensive. Oh, yes. Especially and if you know it. <laughs> we are only a hundred percent and we are only get, going after the right humans. Right. And mm -hmm. so that, so waiting until the last minute, waiting until your breaking point, because we didn't have any outside investment outside of my parents. Bootstrap that was, it. that was an absolute must. Mm -hmm. So uh, then you get to 2022, round 2021. And that mindset isn't working anymore. You mm -hmm. have burnout. You have people just being tossed in multiple different directions. And it really has been a change of mindset of, we have been in hyper growth mode and to keep up with hyper growth mode, we have to have human scale. And yeah. so we don't stretch people until the very breaking point anymore, but we are very intentional about who we hire, when yeah. we hire, um, the, the why of that person and being right. very intentional on, you can't just hire salespeople because mm -hmm. then you don't have the operation support to support them. So it's mm -hmm. this constant teeter tot, like teeter totter. Um, I think that's how you say it. And now we're trying to find that balance. And yeah. now we're trying to figure out, okay, yes, the right humans are expensive. However, mm -hmm. the return that those individuals make into biolite and the changes and the impact that they can make are how we are continuing to grow but that has been a very um that has been a very strong argument that me and my cfo have had because yeah. i'm like more people and he's like yeah <laughs> yeah and, and, and it's, there's like there's always that kind of gray area but like i said maybe that's if i'm hearing you correctly that next stage for biolite is you introduce yourself into the market and profit margins are low and so naturally like most small businesses you only hire humans when you absolutely must when you're maxed out now you're kind of transitioning as you're growing and you're penetrating the market and you're getting market share and you're opening up new pipeline how do you create culture? How do you create a great organization? And how do you scale and kind of be able to balance it out so you don't get way ahead of the cart, way ahead of the horse? But mm -hmm. at the same time, you don't want to wait until you're losing on opportunities or delivering bad experiences to have that mm -hmm. operational scale built ahead of time. So the building up for proactive growth is kind of that maybe that next step for y'all because y'all want to yeah. continue eating up the opportunities and yep. not have to turn away stuff or have a bad dropped ball because yep. you didn't know how to balance that scale and culture and getting the yep. right people no 100 percent. and we've we have run into issues where like in certain states we have gotten away with not having people on the ground and mm -hmm. and stretching our very small team to the very brink in mm -hmm. other states we have lost business because mm -hmm. they're like, you're not going to put somebody on the ground here. Mm -hmm. Bye. Right. Lesson learned. Never again. Here we go. Rather mm -hmm. than being reactive, let's be proactive here, people. Because we're going, we're going to come out on top because the product is just so dang good. So um, I'd like to transition now. I, I want to get uh, some snapshot answers from you. Transitioning from the BioLite story to leaning on your experience as a CEO. Want to get some, uh, maybe we can do some rapid fire uh, before we wrap up the episode. I love it. Okay, rapid fire. All right. I previously did an episode on this, but SCORE, National Coaching Mentoring Organization for Businesses, did a national study. And their data concluded after surveying over a thousand small business CEOs that obviously we're all dealing with profit squeeze. Uh, squeeze. Um, at least pressures that would naturally lead to a profit squeeze uh, from two factors. Rising prices, so it's more expensive to produce your product or service. And then mm -hmm. also just a lack of new customers actually was more revealing what do you think is the bigger small business challenge right now do you think it's rising prices or do you think it's uh, a struggle to get uh, that fresh flow of new customers 100 percent rising prices okay so th the reason why it's absolutely not getting new customers is because that's the name of the game right now mm -hmm. if biolite wasn't getting new customers what then we're mm -hmm. actually doing something wrong mm -hmm. um 
rising prices is definitely, it puts a squeeze on BioLite because the automatic knee-jerk reaction is to raise the price of the of the yeah, bottle to the pass consumer. Pass it on to the customers, the same percentage, right? <laughs> I refuse to do that because yeah. while BioLite is, um, while BioLite is a premium product, mm -hmm. because it is, but it's it's only a premium product because of how well it works, because of its efficacy and mm -hmm. positioning. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that we are going to raise the price to over five dollars a bottle because the customers need this product. It needs to be affordable for them, even though it is premium. It's mm -hmm. not premium because of its price. It's premium because of what's the ingredients inside the bottle. Yep. And I think that there's, you know, we could go down, we could do a follow-up episode where we just talk about customer psychology, but customers absolutely will take notice if you're just reflexively passing along your inconveniences to them and making it their inconveniences. It not only creates a vicious cycle, but it, it if, if people talk about wanting to create brands and communities and really want to have that intimate, loyal relationship with their mm -hmm. customers, well, then it's got to be that, that tango where you're looking for as many creative ways as possible to maximize value for your customers mm -hmm. at all times, even when the price part of the equation gets more complicated for you as a producer. So I fully 100% yeah. agree with that. So um, transitioning, uh, I always love to see how people address this question. What's one thing that everybody in your space should stop doing? And then conversely, one thing that everybody in your space should start doing? What they should stop doing is just lowering the price and lowering the price and lowering the price until at the end of the day, it's just a race to the bottom. Like mm -hmm. I know that a lot of the um, like the big three beverage distributors, Coca Cola, Pepsi, Keurig, Dr Pepper. It is it is all about like getting like moving it off the shelf, and so the price keeps going lower. But when mm -hmm. you keep going lower on the price, you're choosing the worst ingredients. It's the exact same thing like we talked yep. about. If you want to get the right humans. You have to pay for the right humans. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the right ingredients, the right feel better, then you have to pay for those ingredients. And so this whole race to the bottom, it's just, it's it's causing a, a, just kind of like a health pandemic within our entire country. And mm -hmm. I really would like to go away from that. Yeah. And And it's even... Even in the better for you space, you'll have these products that say, hey, this is so much better for you, blah, blah. But when you really, you know, peek behind the curtain, mm -hmm. all they're trying to do is is jump in that race to the bottom. And yeah. they're trying to choose worse ingredients. And you're like, this is just wrapped in, you know, this is just wrapped in in fakeness, like of yep. better for you. It's not actually better for you. Um, that's I actually very, want to piggyback on that. I'd like to piggyback on that as with another testimony from a a small business is they make uh, what I call craft honey. And I, I went up to the the person I have a relationship with. It's like, hey, you know, would you like to scale your business? You know, I'd like to see if I could help you draft a better uh, craft a better e-commerce strategy. And she said no. And I always thought that was puzzling. But one of the reasons she came back and he said, listen, go look at a lot of these other honey producers. They scale by just using lower and lower quality honey. We really pride ourselves on having craft honey. When you use these certain trees and flowers and sources that the bees mm -hmm. use to pollinate and create the highest qualities of honey, you can't just willy-nilly scale up because you'll end up having to sully and water down the product in order to move more volume. So I think that's what you're touching on is – Depending on what your priorities are, a lot of this race to the bottom is is these big companies just wanting to push volume, volume, volume. When, especially when it comes to food products, food and beverage, right. you know, we all we all talk the talk about wanting to have healthier, better food and drinks for people to consume. But if you're not actually talk or walking the walk behind the curtains with your ingredients and your process, you know, that's that's not cool. No, it's not cool. So that's one thing that I would change. Yeah. Um, one thing that I want to remain the same. Okay. Is that, was that the other one? One thing that everybody in your space should start doing. Ooh, one thing everybody in my space should start doing. Well, I think that one thing that everybody in my space should start doing is when they feel dehydrated, when they need relief from headache, fatigue, or nausea due to severe dehydration, they need to drink Biolite. 
All right. <laughs> I agree. You know what? All of our conversation has, has made me thirsty, so I don't know if I'm going to get to the bottom by the time the, uh, the interview ends, but it actually is really good stuff. So um, the final question, the final question is, and I'll go ahead and give you just the part one so you can focus on that, is what is your main advice to a similar company to BioLite two years behind you? So if you, mm -hmm. you're talking to a company that's where you were two years ago, what's your main advice to that leadership team? My main advice to that leadership team is, let's say I'm talking to a CEO of that company, have one-on-ones with your executives. We, we work by an operating system um, called the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's yep. done by the book have, Traction. Have the book. Yep, I have and, the book. And it's a phenomenal model. But mm -hmm. they're, um, one of their big you know, points is you only need to meet with your leadership team one time a week. Mm -hmm. And that way you can get back to doing exactly what you need to be doing. You'll discuss and, your rocks. <laughs> yes, your rocks, like yeah. that weekly meeting and those rocks take care of everything. Yeah. I would suggest that as you get bigger and communication gets harder, mm -hmm. you need to have those one-on-one -on -one touch points, not only for not only for making sure that the business in those departments is off in the right track, but also mm -hmm. also just general bonding with that mm -hmm. with that person. Um, people want to work with pe the people that they like, and so maintaining mm -hmm. those relationships is very very important. Yep. So if you do handle things that way, not only will people be more productive, but they'll go to bat for you. Right. Yeah. They'll have your back. Um, so then, conversely, or I guess along the same lines. You're talking to a company that's two years ahead of you, or at least two years in the direction that you want to go, and you're talking to that CEO, a, a peer in the industry. Mm -hmm. What is the main question you'd have for that CEO? How many, how many executives report to you? Mm. And why would that be the question? Because there are, with BioLite being as versatile of a product as it is, with mm -hmm. it, you know, fitting into healthcare, fitting into athletics, fitting into traditional um, sales platforms, mm -hmm. there are so many people that could potentially report to me mm -hmm. and things that I need to be monitoring. And so I would like to know what their threshold is of people that report to them. Mm -hmm. And then I would also like to know what are the key performance indicators or mm -hmm. um, for the general business, like mm -hmm. what are the absolutes? Like here's where we're trying to go. What are the absolutes that we have to have to know that we're heading in the right direction? Right yes. now, the reason I, I say that is that we're figuring that out right now, mm -hmm. but I want to, there are things that I'm potentially not seeing in, in this, in, today that I could potentially by talking to this person get out of and and yeah. really set the business up for success by thinking two to three years down the road. Right. Organizational structure, leading and lagging indicators, yes. like those health stats. Like we'll even go full back circle to anesthesia. My wife tells me about this anesthesia machine. She says like when she's charting throughout a patient surgery, she is meticulous that by the book person, much like your dad, She's checking all these vital signs. And when 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 she sees this little beep or beep beep yep. starting to do this, yep. she then goes through the process of deducing, is that a symptom? Is that the root issue? Because then she knows needs to know which drug that she needs to administer because if she does it correctly by a proper mm -hmm. diagnosis, she can treat it and everything goes fine. If she mistreats it, she could literally kill the patient, right? So you're, right. you're talking about that. So yeah, maybe in that business is how do you, build out that 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 tree of organization mm -hmm. with responsibilities and also how do you know all those different little metrics so you don't overwhelm yourself with data but have the right data for the right time to make the right decisions exactly and right now we are figuring our way through that walking yeah. through mud but yeah. it would be very nice to be like here's some dry land stand here <laughs> 
and plant that flag, the yes. blue and white BioLite flag. So uh, that was an awesome conversation. I was drinking it up, and that pun was not initially intended, but I definitely am going to say that I planned that now. I was drinking it up, <laughs> both Loved the actual product and that. the knowledge. <laughs> so, um, so for people who are getting thirsty or for people who want to keep up with Jessalyn and just follow an inspirational brand, how can people connect with Jessalyn and BioLite? So Jesslyn is a lot less fun to follow than follow her on LinkedIn, guys. Life. She's sandbagging. Just follow her on LinkedIn. You, you got to be prepared to become the next Kevin O'Leary. OK, you got to put it out there. <laughs> got to put it out there. But Violet is going to be a way more interesting follow. Okay. We are doing some very cool things. Definitely follow Violet on LinkedIn, on Instagram, okay. Facebook. Um, check out our website. We're going to. Mm -hmm do a big overhaul in the next few weeks. And we're really excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, check us out. We are here to help you feel better. So please give us a chance. You will not be disappointed. Perfect. So guys, you can find more information at drinkbiolite.com. This B-I-O-L-Y-T-E.com. I'll put some more links for people to follow in the show notes. Jesslyn, thank you so much for spending some time with us in Good Morning Market. Best wishes in this next era. I can't wait to see which direction you take it. Thank you so much for your love and support, Philip. This has been a lot of fun. It was a tasty episode. It's the final one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jesslyn.